Hi friends, welcome back to Road Just Traveled, your trusted travel guide. Today we are talking about hidden travel costs and I am drinking an army and navy cocktail. It is very empty because I have filmed this video three times. This is my third time, so um, it's been a rough day. But anyway, this cocktail, freaking delicious. And if you stay till the end, I will actually show you how to make one and tell you more about it. So that's kind of a new fun thing we're trying. So, so many people spend way too much money while traveling. After years of budget travel, I have discovered lots of hacks and tips that I now share with you. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you don't miss anything. I have over a hundred videos, so there's something out there for you, I'm sure. So I go into more detail in this video, but beware, not all hosts are background checked by Airbnb. Out of over 200 countries that Airbnb services, only two of them offer background checks and the background checks are limited. So uh, watch that video for more information. I'll put the link in the description. So the first thing I do when I get to a hotel, especially a cheap one that's a little dingy, is I take these decorative pillows and the quilts and I just throw that shit off the bed and then I wash my hands. <laughs> Those things never get washed. They are not like steaming. I mean, this like this unzips, but not all of them do that. And they're not, they're not taking this off and washing, washing that. And they're not steaming the pillows and they're not washing every quilt after everyone. And it's absolutely disgusting to me, especially because the quilt, like people have on top of the bed. And so they're having on the quilt and they're like reusing it with you. In fact, I have found in a very nice hotel, mind you, this little white, this little, I'm gonna actually throw up, this white blob that was on the pillowcase, very small, but I noticed it with a little hair in it that came not from someone's head. That hair was not from someone's head, it was from another part that was not near their head. And I need a drink right now to forget it. Nope, still remember, don't use the quilt. If you are in a hotel and you're making drinks or just drinking water, do not put ice in those ice buckets that they give you and use that for your drinks. <laughs> According to hotel employees, when someone drinks too much and they can't make it to the bathroom in time, they vomit in the ice bucket. Hate that. So I have this video called, This Will Make You a Germaphobe, about all the disgusting shit you encounter in travel but you might not think about or have any idea. If you want your life ruined and to never feel the same, highly recommend watching that video. <laughs> what a great sell that was. I should be a car salesman. Anyway, let's move on to the next tips. So I got a request to talk about traveling with meds and I am so glad because I have a lot to say about this. Um, traveling with medications, especially internationally, can get hairy. If you're taking any type of controlled substance, highly recommend keeping the pills in their original container that has your name on it. And if you want to be super careful, you can bring a copy of your prescription or a note from your doctor saying that they prescribed it to you I would actually do a quick Google search too and double check that the meds you're taking are legal in the country you're going to. Some countries, US included, do not f around with controlled substances and you could be saving yourself a huge headache or worse by doing this. For example, if you've been prescribed a cough syrup that has codeine in it, that is a controlled substance in the US and probably elsewhere. Uh, but even if it's not controlled where you live, double check, for example, Abilify, which is a medication that I've taken, hated it, but that's another story, is illegal in Dubai. Also Lexapro, which is a very common antidepressant, is illegal there. And Ritalin as well, which a lot of people with ADHD depend on. I just found this huge list by Googling like illegal medication in Dubai. And it also says that if trace amounts are found in your blood and urine, Dubai could take legal action against you which you definitely do not want. So obviously countries like Dubai are more extreme, but if you're traveling internationally, please, please, please look up your meds ahead of time. You can always contact your country's embassy before traveling. You just say, call them and say, hey, I'm going to this country and I take these meds. Is this okay to bring? And they will tell you what to do. Worst case, if a medication is illegal and you absolutely cannot 
get through with a note or anything from your doctor, you can always ask your doctor to prescribe an alternative. Also, always pack your meds in your carry-on or your purse instead of checking a bag because if your bag gets lost, you may not have your meds for a while or ever. And my last tip with meds is to bring extra. You all know that I got COVID in New York earlier this year and I had to extend my trip because being on a plane with COVID would have been a move. I have bipolar two and I took two extra days of medications on my trip just in case, but I ended up staying an extra three days. So I was missing one day, which was fine. But if it had been like a week, I would have been feeling pretty and I had thought, oh, well, like, I'll just have my doctor call in a prescription to a local pharmacy here. No, it was not that easy because guess what? My insurance wouldn't cover it because they only cover, you know, 30 days of meds every month. So it's not as easy as that. I recommend bringing meds for twice as many days as you need them for. So if you're going for a week, bring two weeks worth. You can never be too careful and they don't take up a lot of space if you put them in a little container. So if you find a good deal with the hotel or an online travel agent like hotels.com, booking.com, or any other OTA with great commercials, you can call the hotel and you can say, hey, I'm looking to book for these dates and this site's giving me this price, can you do better? And even if they just match it, which a lot of hotels will do, it is a hell of a lot easier to book directly with the hotel than book through an online travel agent, especially if you need to change or cancel your trip. Friends, this is transcending travel advice and will actually change your life. This is poopery. This is not sponsored, but you spray it in the toilet like three times and then you poop and the oils like wrap around it and contain it. My husband just got home and he's listening to this. Um, so it wraps around it. I don't need to explain to you how it works, but all you need to know is that all you smell is lavender or whatever the fragrance you get uh, because you know when you just like light a candle or light a match and or you spray afterwards it just smells like you're masking poop smell and this is so much better <laughs> and uh what does this have to do with travel well if you're staying at someone's house it's gonna solve a lot of awkwardness and also if you're in a hotel room that you're sharing with someone or even if you're in your own hotel room it's it's like one bathroom and then the hotel room if the bathroom smells the whole place smells because it's not a big place so if you're sharing the room with, the, with your partner or with multiple people, I'm telling you, this is a life changer. Highly recommend. So you might already know that hotels and resort pricing is automated and it fluctuates. So maybe one day a room will be $299 a night and then the next day it'll be $200 a night. So the rule of thumb is book hotels that are mostly business hotels on weekends because business travelers book during the week and then book resort hotels on weekdays as many families book on the weekend. And those are my tips. Let's head on over to the kitchen so I can tell you more about this drink. Alrighty, you made it till the end. Let's talk about this cocktail. This is called the Army and Navy. It was created around in the 40s uh, because there was a social club in Washington DC, there might still be. Uh, called the Army and Navy. This was their signature drink and it's absolutely delicious. I drank a lot of these in June of 2020. We found out about these, really good. First, you take a shaker, fill it with ice, and then we do two ounces. Where's my thing? Am I crazy? Here it is. <laughs> two ounces of ice, so we're gonna flip it over. Um, or two ounces of ice. Am I on drugs today? Two ounces of gin. I'm telling you, it's been a long day today. Please have patience and grace with me. Two ounces of gin, flip it over. Three quarter ounces of orja. I like, this is small hand foods. They also, if you can't find a lot of craft cocktail stuff, BevMo and companies like that usually have Trader Vic's, which has an orja syrup. It's not the greatest, but better than nothing. Or you can make it, actually. You can make your own if you just look up. But yes, it's an almondy sugar syrup and it's delicious. You use it for a lot of tiki drinks. So three quarters of an ounce of that, and then one ounce lemon. Usually about half a lemon is an ounce. Get that in. Lastly, Angostura bitters. So a couple dashes of that. Then put the top on and shake for 15 seconds. 
All right, straight into a chilled coupe glass, which always makes me fa feel fancy drinking out of these. And this is an army and navy. I'm like shaking because I don't want to spill it. That's the thing about coupe glasses. They're kind of annoying that way. Very good. The lemon is really, brings some acid in. The orja sweetens it a little bit, but not too much. And then the bitters kind of balance it out. Really like it. Uh, if you tr if you make it yourself, let me know what you think. If there are any cocktails you're really into now that you'd like me to try or put in a video, let me know. This is a fun new thing I'm doing. Happy travels.